because we need to know what hurdles to bypass. You see, a great man once said, a son's strength is in his ability to dodge the bullets that hit his father. A father uh, may have been hit by some bullets, but his son's responsibility is to study the father's journey and know what hurdles stopped his father and see them coming before they hit him. Come rain, come sunshine Search my heart and all you will find There's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah There's no lie I will hold you Come over Forever be my lover Woman in the sun Come on look at you What's going on guys? You're welcome to Amazing Minds Zambia's first late night show If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share uh, this is our Wednesday show the educative segment of the show as you know we have three segments that's if you're familiar with this show we have three segments uh, Monday show Wednesday show and Bible talks so the Monday show is for political discussions uh, we just had one interesting political discussion on Monday actually the Wednesday show is the educative segment and Fridays are for Bible talks so the show, the show airs three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time right here on YouTube. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, same time, uh, same days. Yeah, so please subscribe, hit that bell, and share. Um, the show is here to entertain, inform, and educate you. So again, Mondays for the political segment so whatever is going on in the news whatever is going on in the country and uh, with time in the region and in the world at large so we discussed that i have a co-host on that one on the monday show that's chofia mr chofia mnyenyembe or as uh, siri calls him chofia chofia is an avid caller on the red hot breakfast show that's hot fm and most people know him from there uh, but he's a vibrant political commentator uh, concerned with the matters that are going on in the country wednesday however is the educative segment and we have different kinds of content on this day uh, initially we aired rebuttals so we did a rebuttal on alice lenshina giving the true facts of her story uh, that was the first rebuttal we did. Then we did the Adamson Mushala. We did the Maloney Brothers. We did um, Mwamba Luchembe, Captain Solo. We've done a number of rebuttals. Uh, my favorite being so far, Simon Mwansakapwepu. We also did a rebuttal on Princess Diana and how she plundered the resources of Charles Hart because she wasn't uh, a princess after all. Uh, so apart from rebuttals, we have uh, the history segments and we've done history on Zambia and its independence, how Zambia got its independence. And today is another history segment. We're talking about Thomas Sankara. Uh, this was the former leader of a country known as Burkina Faso now, which was before its independence known as the upper voter. And Thomas Sankara was one revolutionary who was known for turning this country around from the hands of... Uh, the colonial masters to the hands of the military into the hands of Thomas Sankara, who turned the country around but was later betrayed uh, and killed in a coup just as he uh, took over the country in a coup. So today is part one of Thomas Sankara's story. We're going to talk about his birth, his childhood and his education all the way till his uh, joining the military. So we have history segments. We also have on this uh, particular Wednesday show episodes where we invite guests uh, who teach us different things in, the, in their field. So far, we've had three doctors on the show. Uh, we're yet to have a few medical people. This month, I believe we should be discussing AIDS. AIDS, right? Is it? Yeah. So we should be discussing AIDS this month. Yeah. Uh, to discuss a few uh, a few things on the same 
Subject, I did a Monday show not too long ago that I titled Whatever Happened to the AIDS Pandemic. Do you guys ever wonder what happened to the AIDS Pandemic? Because AIDS was a big thing uh, when we were growing up. I remember the number of warnings we were given when going to school about not uh, doing this and doing that lest we get AIDS. And I guess the knowledge and information on the aid, uh, HIV and AIDS wasn't as sufficient as it is now. As a matter of fact, we now know that it's not as easy to transmit as we thought it was before. And we now know that AIDS was more prevalent in, in certain communities. Yeah, so anyway, Friday show is for Bible Talks. We discuss the Bible from different angles. We discuss different subjects of the, of the scriptures, uh, talking about a believer's life, how you can build yourself up spiritually, just as you would do uh, in your body or in your soul. Yeah, so let's get into it. Thomas Sankara. So Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara was a Burkina military officer Marxist revolutionary and pan-Africanist who served as president of Burkina Faso from his coup in 1983 to his assassination in 1987. He is viewed by his supporters as charismatic. This man was born December 21st, 1949 in Yako of Upper Volta, which is now known as Burkina Faso and assassinated on October 15th, 1987 uh, in Burkina Faso. So... Uh, he ruled for about four years uh, just before he was killed. And uh, yeah, he has a great story. He did a number of things for his country. And we're going to get into that uh, from his childhood all the way up to his assassination. We'll, we'll get into his assassination in, in part two. So I hope you've brought your shouting clothes tonight. Uh, this is going to be fun. Yeah, this Thomas Sankara grew up in a fairly well-to-do family. His father was uh, part of the French military in, um, in the Second World War. And at the time, the country that was known as Upper Volta, which is now Burkina Faso, uh, was being colonized by the French people. And um, his father, Joseph Sankara, was... Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the military, this meant that they lived a not so bad life. So uh, the Sankara family lived on top of a hill in a brick house from where they were able to view the whole city. And uh, this meant that it put Thomas Sankara and his nine siblings, he was the third of 10 children, uh, in a good position growing up. They didn't grow up in a, in a poor family. Yeah, so Upper Volta was not... Uh, viewed by its colonial masters as a resourceful country, as a country they could exploit uh, in terms of its minerals and resources, like one northern Rhodesia was exploited for its copper. Uh, Upper Volta, on the other hand, had able-bodied young men who were kept as reserve labor. So these people were not necessarily viewed as, um, as a resourceful people in terms of the land that they... Uh, that they dwelt in, but the people themselves, the young men were seriously considered for labor. This meant that also there was not much investment into Burkina Faso. And so it remained a poor country, even through colonial rule. There was not much infrastructure development, neither was there any mineral resources to build their own country. And whatever little they had, even the very little they had, was taken away from them. So Burkina Faso or Upper Volta was greatly impoverished and the population was taken advantage of on the account of them being considered able-bodied uh, for the sake of labor reserves. By the age of 11, uh, Thomas and his friends, because at this time he had begun to interact with uh, other children in the community who were uh, the children of what we would re refer to as the slaves, as the colonized population. So Thomas began to interact with these people and began to see just the differences between the colonial master's kids and the colonized uh, people. This word always gets to me, colonized, colonizer. Wow. Anyway, so uh, he began to interact with them and began to see the differences. And this obviously steered uh, a level of discomfort in his heart. And by the age of 11, he and his friends organized a mock 
ceremony where they lowered the French flag and raised up a flag with colors of what they refer to as a new nation. Uh, this act by Thomas Sankara, a young Thomas Sankara, 11 years old at the time, and his friends led to a brow with some of the white kids, uh, children of the colonial masters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> that obviously isn't uh, Thomas Sankara, neither is it Burkina Faso. But you get the point. And after this brow uh, that uh, started due to the small ceremony they held, though Thomas Sankara was not involved in the fight himself, um, the school where he was, that he was attending, uh, the school's authorities insisted that his father should discipline him by giving him a beating, uh, to which his father refused. And this, for me, almost gives an idea into why the character of this man called Thomas Sankara was the way it was, because he learned it from his father. His father was not a push around or someone that would just roll over and play dead, beat his children because the colonial masters have said so. Uh, this wasn't the case. As a matter of fact, as he began to grow up, he was brilliant in school and uh, he was also pursuing religious studies at the same time. This meant that while he was in school, he was mm, studying uh, Christian material and the likes to the extent that uh, the priests of the community recommended that he be commissioned to the, to the seminary. At this time, he was in his fifth grade and he wrote his exams to get into the sixth grade, right? And he did exceptionally well in his exams. And so his father said, no, my son is not going to the seminary. Uh, he's intelligent school-wise and therefore he'll remain in school to pursue his education further. And the priests of the seminary told his father, sir, you aren't praying enough for your boy and therefore you're confused about his destiny. As the years went by, uh, the country gained its independence from the colonial masters, the French people. Um, this was 5th August, 1960. And they had their first president who was Mr. Maurice Yameogo. I hope I'm getting that correctly. And uh, he was uninspiring. He maintained strong ties with the French people and went as far as having French advisors both within the military and the civil service. And this did not sit well uh, with most people within the uh, upper voter. This led to many conflicts with people within his own government, uh, people within his own uh, institutions, and there were all manner of uh, pressure groups that began to arise due to the same. And he was, like every first African president was, displaying dictatorial tendencies. What you saw Kaunda do in Zambia, <laughs> it was a joke compared to what this man did. He locked up his opponents, killed them, put his family in positions of power in order to maintain his strong influence and will over the people. But as you know, as the story always ends with such leaders, on January 3rd, 1966, an insurrection bred within the people, within the capital city of this upper volta, which is now referred to as Burkina Faso. And the people began to riot and protest and go on strike and there was an innumerable number of protesters in the streets. But to his surprise, the president's orders were not obeyed by the military to disperse the people, the protesters, by force. And this in itself was a clear picture for this president that his time was up. Now, this led to the resignation of President Maurice, the first president of Burkina Faso, or as it was referred to at the time, upper voter and he handed over power to the army commander, 
Lieutenant Colonel Sangor Lamizana. Honestly speaking, I don't know if I'm getting these names correctly. Yeah, but you can research and get their spellings and see whether you pronounce them better than I did. Yeah. Now, while all this insurrection and disobedience of the military to the president was happening and all these riots and whatnot and the military taking over power, Thomas Sankara was still in high school and he was simply observing these things on the radio. He was a patriotic citizen, very serious at the school and uh, a bright student at that. You don't say. So he was observing all this in... Um, on the radio while still in school and the military at the time was very, very popular. Now the new president of the country opened up a new military academy and said that among us the recruitees that would recruit three uh, recently graduated students from, from high school that graduated with a certificate. And this pushed Mr. Sankara to work harder in order to uh, get this opportunity. Thomas joined the military in 1966 at the age of 17, uh, following in the footsteps of his father career-wise. And this began the journey of Mr. Sankara in military, who would later become a captain and later become the president of the country and transform it. Now, as I say, this is part one. We'll conclude his story in part two. But I hope this gives you a brief history into this hero called Thomas Sankara. I believe it's important to understand our history, our African history from our perspective, to understand the true history, what really happened, what really led to us being here. Only then can we really understand where we're going or at least narrow into a future we want to see. You see, the past is important in determining why we're where we are today. And until we understand the past, we can't really plot the future because we need to know what hurdles to bypass. You see, a great man once said, a son's strength is in his ability to dodge the bullets that hit his father. A father uh, may have been hit by some bullets, but his son's responsibility is to study the father's journey and know what hurdles stopped his father and see them coming before they hit him. This means that all our fathers, our African fathers and leaders who fought for our independence, who got us to better places economically, all our fathers faced challenges. And only if we understand these challenges and their successes can we forge ahead to build a society and a civilization that we want and that we desire. So it's important for each and every one of you listening to me to get this knowledge, internalize it, and see how best you, as a young person, can make the contributions that the likes of Sankara made to his people. Once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. Subscriptions alone on YouTube are decorations if you don't subscribe. Yeah. So again, the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, as I said before, uh, Mondays are for political discussions. Wednesdays are for educative segment and Fridays are for Bible talks. So this was the history of Thomas Sankara. Part one, that is, we'll have part two of the said next week, Wednesday to conclude on who uh, Thomas Sankara was in the military and as president and just what he did for the for the people of Burkina Faso. If you've been watching the show so far, which segment is your favorite? The Monday show, the Wednesday show, or Bible Talks? Leave it in the comments. Tell me which segment you think is your favorite and tell me what you'd like to see on that segment. Yeah, I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.